Diablo 4 is the most recent release in the series that defined a genre. Is it the most painfully boring Diablo yet? Watch on and find out. My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. Warrior and Rogue at Tristram, When Diablo Fell. I was there for the first one, the game that defined a genre. I played Diablo 2 as well. Somehow I missed Diablo 3, but Diablo 4, I... well... I can't tell you how many hours I have in it because Blizzard had decided you can't get playtime stats from Battle.net. I did play the open beta and then played the full game. I probably put 40 plus hours into the game to beat the main storyline, but that guess is just because that's what Game Pass suggested it takes people to beat it. Maybe I have a little more. The premise of Diablo 4 is, well, the same stupid premise of every Diablo game. Something, 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 hell, back with a vengeance, kill all people, something, something, horror, demon, something. You've heard this kind of thing before. Specifically, a demon named Lilith is making an appearance, or a reappearance, or whatever, and she's going to mess everything up. You, obviously, are the random wanderer who is uniquely and specially equipped to defeat her, in spite of being a level zero whatever your character class is. Don't worry about that, though, you totally got this. Speaking of character classes, Diablo 4 has some new ones compared to Diablo 3 and previous games. The expected big damage melee thing, a barbarian, a typical magic user, a sorcerer, and then some other interesting things. I chose a necromancer for my playthrough of Diablo 4, which happens to be a class introduced in Diablo 2, although I have no recollection of that. Either way, my decision to pick a necromancer was an absolutely horrible choice because the game was so painfully and stupidly easy with a necromancer that it bordered on self-torture. But we'll get to that in a moment. Diablo 4 has quite a large gameplay area consisting of several regions, each with its own small sub-areas. Each region's areas are somewhat unique in terms of the hellish creatures that you find there, which require dispatching. One of the nice features about Diablo 4, which I don't know if it was in Diablo 3, is the fact that you don't have to buy and carry town portal scrolls as items. You can always teleport to town. There is also a system of fast travel waypoints that allow you to teleport to specific places at any time you want. In a way, this is part of what makes the game pretty maddeningly boring because you don't have to balance carrying things like healing potions or mana potions. In fact, mana is now called Essence, and I don't think I ever found a potion to refill that bulb. Health has a specific slot for healing potions. Gone are the different sized healing potions from yesterday. In D4, you have to literally upgrade your healing potions at a shop to make the potions more, um, potent. Speaking of shops, there are quite a lot of them at this point. The things you would expect, like the armor and the weaponsmith, are present. But there are a slew of other stupid and silly vendors, which essentially all can be boiled down to a simple reality. Diablo 4 is trying to be a massive RPG with something for everyone that keeps you coming back to play it forever, ponying up for Battle Pass to get new perks and baubles and other things. You can craft stuff, you can modify stuff, and not only can you modify stuff, but you can modify stuff six ways from Sunday. Tempering, affixing, oh, and don't you know that there are several effective in-game currencies for doing all of these things? And there's basically a gambling minigame where you collect obols to risk getting random gear that might be total trash or might be some mega, ultra, unique, legendary, mythical unicorn slayer thing. Whatever. Anyway, this game is an RPG, so you have skills that you can level up. And, like most RPGs, depending on your character class, certain stats are better than others. The Necromancer does well with intelligence, so picking gear out that buffs int will serve you well. I learned this from a build guide that told me how to make a Blood Surge Necromancer. That sounded like something totally cool-ish. Wrong. I mean, sure, sucking the blood out of your enemies and getting partially healed by it sounds cool in theory. But the resulting gameplay became so ludicrously lame that I had to increase the difficulty level to World Tier 2 just to smell a hint of a challenge. 
I only died twice in my entire playthrough, and I was pretty mindless about everything. Once was because I paid no attention to a particular encounter and somehow was getting hit for big damage and I was dead before I knew it. Oops. The other time was because the game suddenly introduced the ground literally disappearing under me in a way that caused insta-death. You jerks. Yeah, that was in the final battle with Lilith too. So, typical RPG crap, follow a character build guide. It's pretty mindless. Walk into an area of a ginormous pile of creatures, cast a curse, which also does shadow damage because of random gear and other buffs, and also fills up my mana, I mean essence, and then cast Blood Surge a ton of times, which heals me, but also does mega Jenga damage to everything in sight. And if they're not all dead yet, or some new folks show up, just repeat the process. Oh, and my main weapon attack actually sucks up essence, so I pretty much always have an endless supply, even if I have to wait a moment. And then there's this corpse tendril thing that pulls all the enemies close together and slightly messes them up, but back to the gear for a moment. With names like rare, legendary, and unique, you would think that these objects and items would be, I don't know, rare or something. But between the regular loot drops, the slightly enhanced loot drops because of the raised world tier, and then the stupid weekend event of literally named treasure goblins everywhere, I picked up so much legendary and unique gear that I had no idea what to do with it. And while there were armor and weapon vendors, I only purchased a single item from a vendor one time because I got so many drops so quickly that I never even had to think about purchasing stuff. By the time I got close to the end, it seemed like equipment I picked up literally couldn't be more powerful than the equipment I already had, so I just ended up selling everything and salvaging things to pick up new affixes, which I never used anyway. Oh, and to add to the, this game is so boring I could cry, I ended up scoring some item that had a buff that would deploy a blood orb when I overpowered, except that I had all these other buffs in gear that would cause me to overpower every single time. So the end game was me literally filling the screen with blood orbs in two seconds and then walking in circles, causing bajillions upon bajillions of explosive damage. I killed most bosses in mere seconds, and even Lilith took no time to dispatch in the end. It wasn't even a challenge. It was like challenging toddlers to a foot race as an adult when I tied their shoelaces together, but I have a motorcycle. It's not even a hint of a memory of the fact that maybe there was a challenge a while ago. Oh, and there are all these goofy world events and all kinds of other stuff, and apparently player versus player, but the thing that probably upset me the most was that they copied the pets from Torchlight, and now you have a dog that picks up some, but not all, loot for you. Like you couldn't even steal something from someone else's game, right? Jeez, Blizzard, come on. Before I give my final verdict, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Agree with me, disagree with me, or want to see other content? Let me know in the comments below. Want to try this game yourself? Check out my humble affiliate link below. And. If you want to support me in making more of these videos, become a patron on Patreon. Your support really makes a difference. The final verdict. This game has a story which I honestly got completely bored with pretty early on in the game. There was one minor twist that frankly I should have seen coming and wasn't that interesting in the grand scheme of things. Then, the ending of the game was a complete and total letdown, which also set up, painfully obviously, Diablo V. The side quests are banal, there's a whole system of world bosses and Helltide and all kinds of crazy things that I didn't even bother trying. Look, maybe I just stumbled across some completely and ridiculously overpowered build with the Blood Surge Necro, but seriously, the game has been out for a long time. They should have figured it out by now if that build needed to be nerfed. On my trademark three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat. Don't waste your money on this one. I played it because it was free with Game Pass, and now, honestly, I kind of want my 40 hours back. This game left me hungry for a fun story, a challenge, and really just anything more than mindlessly casting the same single sequence of spells over and over and over again. No, Blizzard, just no.